Thank you, Nakhwar, for the precious praise. Though we cannot see, if we walk by faith, then I believe that God will be at work. He will lead us. And as we walk by faith, He will walk with us as well so that there will be a work of victory. I truly thank you for the precious praise. The title for today's message, through which we will receive grace, is Gather to me, my godly ones, who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Gather to me, my godly ones, who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This psalm this, uh, from the scripture reading, Psalm 50, is a psalm of Asaph, who was the head of the choir at the temple in Jerusalem. And the theme of this psalm is the message of restoring the true sacrifice, which is the true worship. Also, it declares God's judgment upon the hypocrites, the leaders of the churches whose outside and inside were different. So with a truthful heart, with an honest heart, let us come to understand today's word so that we will obey the word. And until Father returns, we will continue to press on with firm faith to help understand. If we look at the structure of Psalm 50, verses 1 through 15, it can be divided into two parts. First, from verses 1 through 6, is the content containing uh, the message that God, the judge, uh, him summoning the witnesses in heaven and on earth to distinguish the godly ones who have made a covenant with God by sacrifice. And verses 7 through 15 speak about the sacrifices that God accepts and the sacrifices that he does not accept. And in verse 7, he said, I do not reprove you for your sacrifices. Whether a wealthy person offers a calf for a lamb or whether a poor man offers a dove, regarding those, I will not reprove you. He clearly mentions this. However, one thing, he says, does your worship contain thanksgiving or not? That is what I'm going to look at. With what kind of heart have you come out to worship? With a heart of thanksgiving? with a truthful heart, a faithful heart. Also in verse 17, or verse 14, it says, Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. In the last verse, verse 23 as well, He who offers a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors God, and he will see the salvation of God. So without thanksgiving, everything is in vain. I believe that all of you have come out today with a heart of thanksgiving. Even if you did not, then through this worship, I believe that your heart will change, your thoughts will change, our spirits, our joints and marrows will change into a heart of thanksgiving. And with that kind of thanksgiving, let us give worship. Romans 1, verses 21 through 23, it says, For even though they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks. But they became futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. So we must pray with thanksgiving, we must praise with thanksgiving, and we must give our offerings with thanksgiving, and we must serve the church with thanksgiving. Without thanksgiving, what happens to everything? We complain, we grumble, we get annoyed, and we blame other people. What else? When we work and serve the church without thanksgiving, we start to say, has anybody worked harder than me in this church? This church cannot function without me. And you become proud. What comes with pride? You fall. You crumble down. If we have had this kind of heart, even a little bit, let us repent thoroughly. And in these end times, in these precious times, 
before these many things that we must do for the work of God, let us give worship to Him with thanksgiving and give glory to Him. I hope that this will happen to all the saints of Pyongyang, and this I bless you upon, uh, upon you with the name of the Lord. First, we must worship in spirit and truth with thanksgiving. We must give worship in spirit and truth with thanksgiving. I believe that we have heard this verse and message a lot. But are we giving worship in spirit and truth with thanksgiving right now? For every worship, are we giving worship with such attitude? Or are we giving worship out of habit? Oh, I have to go today. What would happen if I don't go? In today's scripture reading, Psalm 50, verses 8 through 13, God said, I do not reprove you for your sacrifices, but he reproved the lack of thanksgiving the most. We must give our offerings, our sacrifices to God according to our, cir our circumstances, but with thanksgiving. This is what it means. There's a terrifying message in verse 22 when we don't have thanksgiving. It says, You who forgot God, I will tear you in pieces. I will tear you up in pieces. God says He will tear us up if we don't have uh, thanksgiving. So please believe that I hope that you will all give thanksgiving before God for being able to come out to the Wednesday service. Our beloved saints of Pyongyang, even if I don't have anything and I don't own anything, please give thanksgiving to God. Your business doesn't go well. Your work is not working out. And things are frustrating. You can't find a job. No matter how hard you study and you have this goal and you prepare, it doesn't work out. Even still, let us always give thanksgiving. That thankful heart, God knows it. So when we pray, let us pray, God, I have nothing to be thankful for, but please give me the grace to pray to you with thanksgiving. And for that, I thank you. I lay down everything before you and pray to you, so please have compassion on me. Let us pray like that. Then, even if we have nothing to be thankful about, God will see our heart, the thankful heart, and He will answer our prayers so that things will turn out well. Please believe this and pray by faith. Verse 23, He who offers a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, meaning he who offers worship of thanksgiving honors me, and to him who orders his way aright, I shall show the salvation of God. God said, I shall show you the salvation of God. And to say that he will show it to you means that he will give it to you. In these end times, God is saying that he will save you. Also, in John 4, verses 23 and 24, God said, I will seek those who worship in spirit and truth. Then we should be sought. When he seeks, then we must be found by him. What good is it if many people gather? A worship without spirit and truth, even if many people gather, God will not seek them. God has kept us alive until now. We must be thankful for that. And until the day we fall and until the day He calls us, we must not be lazy, but with faithfulness and truthfulness and with thanksgiving before God, as we live that kind of life, that person is the person who is awake, the person that God seeks the person who fulfills God's will. Colossians 4 verse 2 says, Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. 
And this is not talking about being on the alert from sleeping, being awake from sleeping. Our spirit, our soul must be awake on the alert, not dragged around by Satan, stuck in darkness, but always being on the alert by praying before God in our daily lives and everything, wherever we go, whatever we do, we must be on the alert and awake. This is telling us that we must pray with thanksgiving. That's the meaning of being on the alert with thanksgiving. A heart of always praying before God wherever we go, whatever we do. The heart of praying to Him. Everything beginning and ending with prayer, we must be like that. Also in Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7, Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Verse 7, having been firmly rooted and now being built up in Him and established in your faith, just as you were instructed and overflowing with gratitude. In your lives, are you overflowing with gratitude? And have you shared that gratitude with others? Have you shared the fragrance of Jesus with others? How much thanksgiving have you given? What happens when you don't have thanksgiving? You don't pray. You don't worship. You don't praise. Because everything becomes idle and you become lazy. But when we praise with gratitude, God sees the center of our hearts. And He will give you the blessing of health, the blessing of your household tur out, turning out well, and the church being blessed as well. So we must not do anything because we're forced. Saint means the holy crowd. In the Chinese characters, it comprises of the two characters, holy and crowd. So you and I who are receiving the word right now are people who have been consecrated as the holy crowd. Please believe that. You have been chosen. You have been consecrated. And in order to fulfill His will, Father chose you. Isaiah 13 verse 3 says, I have commanded my consecrated ones. I have even called my mighty warriors, my proudly exulting ones, to execute my anger. So because God has consecrated us as holy, we have received God's order, and through obedience to His orders, we must press on. And I believe that is why you are all here by faith. Why did He consecrate us then? Why did God consecrate us? So that we will worship Him. To worship. Psalm 50 verse 5 says, Gather my godly ones to me. Gather my godly ones to me. To whom? To me. And here, the godly ones in Hebrew is hasid, which means the saints or the consecrated people who have made a covenant with God through worship, through sacrifice. So this is speaking of the consecrated people. Let us have some pride in this. If you have understood this word, then in these end times, nobody must fall behind. No matter what trials or tribulations come about, we must endure until the end and press on until the end. Through worship, what belongs to God is separated from that of the world. Light and darkness is separated, and truth and untruthfulness are separated. Worship separates the willing heart and the forced heart. And to our children, to our families, we say this. Hey, don't you want to come worship with me? 
And they say, okay, I will. But in their heart, they don't want to go. But because the parent scolds them, they go because they're forced. They don't want to hear uh, the scolding. So the consecrated saint must have a willing heart. Psalm 51, verse 12, David said, God, God, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Give me a willing spirit so I can work voluntarily. So when a saint worships or when a saint serves the church, to devote him or herself to the church, they must do it with a willing spirit. The men's ministry in this heat, they went inside the drains and they dragged up all of the nasty dirt that smelled, and they were drenched in sweat from head to toe and then they were coming up to eat lunch. How can they do that without a willing spirit? And our eldresses, the women's ministry, what about them? In that heat, they go into the restaurant, they have their caps, their masks, and their aprons, and even during the summer retreat, they didn't even have an air conditioner, not even a fan. How can they do that without a willing spirit? and all of the hands that help out and volunteer and serve the church, how can they do that without a willing spirit? Coming out early on Lord's Day to prepare for worship with all your heart and all your soul, that heart of preparing. Everybody feels the same way. They want to rest. But you come out early in the morning. You sweep the church grounds that willing heart father knows all of it please believe that those who worship have already been consecrated by God please believe this we must not be forced we must not be forced but have a voluntary heart we must not come to church as if we're dragged like a calf. Just as I mentioned earlier, it's difficult to transmit our faith to our children, right? It's hard. At times, you want to give up. Do whatever you want to. I don't know anymore. If you turn out well, I'll see you in heaven. Please think about today's message deeply and pray as you think about it. Please allow me a heart of thanksgiving, a willing spirit, so that when we pray, do pray that your family will be led to Father's house. And then Father will surely look at your heart, hear your prayers, and be at work so that your family members will come walking with their own feet with a willing spirit. They will return to Father and become Father's children. Please believe that. And this I bless you in your name of the Lord. Secondly, it is the worship given according to God's covenant. Worship given according to God's covenant. Psalm 50 verse 5 says, Gather my godly ones to me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice or worship. Saints are those who have made a covenant with God by sacrifice, meaning worship. And who are these people? They are you. Originally, we were people without the covenant. We had no God, we had no covenant. We had no hope. We were all children of wrath. 
but we have become people covenanted with God through worship. How much do, does God love us, have mercy and compassion on us? We who worship today are the holy people of God, the saints who have entered a covenant relationship with God through worship. Please remember this at all times. And please inscribe this word in your heart. Please believe it firmly so that no matter what kind of wind comes about, we will not waver left or right. Ephesians 2.12 Remember that you were at that time separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. God has allowed us worship and has ratified a covenant with us through worship. How thick is his rope of love? Please do not give up on worship. Please do not be lazy in giving worship. Before believing in Jesus, we were strangers to the covenants of promise that are recorded in the Bible. We had no hope and we had no God. But now, through faith in Jesus and through worship, we have become His covenant people. This is clearly recorded in the Bible. And now, God regards us as precious. Please do not forget this. Worship determines our life. It determines our life. Please think about this. When you had a slump in your faith, what was my life of faith like? What was my worship like? How close was I to God? And how much did I communicate with Him through prayer? How much did I obey the Word? And how much did I give offerings with thanksgiving? How much did I devote myself? Depending on giving worship well or not, it will change the blessings that we receive. If we don't give worship, our faith is uh, its not that we believe or we don't even believe. We can't pray. We can't say anything. After saying, shouting Amen, Hallelujah three times, we're unable to say anything. So when we look in the Bible, worship must be given with godliness, with all our heart and all our mind and our soul of loving God. It must be given with a heart of loving God. We have heard this word so many times. What do we do when we love? Our hearts pound. Our footsteps of coming to worship. You don't know how excited you are because you want to meet God, the one you love. Therefore, without true worship, we cannot become true saints. So this is a very important verse. Psalm 50, verse 5. Gather my godly ones to me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. When God says gather, we must be gathered. We must be called. And looking at this word, we did not come because we wanted to, but it was because it was God's will. So all, all of our lives, we must be held by God's hand and trusted to Him. Not doing things according to my judgment, my will, or deeds, but we must live a life of being completely surrendered to God. When we come to worship God, did we bring a calf as a sacrifice? Did we buy and bring a lamb or a dove? Jesus became our sacrificial offering, and because Jesus became our propitiation, by faith, 
we have brought Jesus as our sacrifice in our hearts, and with a thankful heart, we're able to offer our worship to Him. God sees us and says, You are believing in me through this sacrifice, my son. So our worship becomes a living sacrifice that is pleasing to God. The Son of God, the Lamb, is our sacrificial offering. 1 John 2, verse 2, And He Himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. Also in 1 John 4, 10, He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. So in the Old Testament times, when they slaughtered the offerings, they put the blood in a bowl and dipped hyssop in it and sprinkled it towards the most holy place, saying your names out loud. And if the priest said, your sins are forgiven, all you have to do is say, Amen. But the problem is they had to slaughter, if you had to slaughter animals every single day, day and night, whenever you sinned, think about that. If you gave a sacrifice today but sinned tomorrow, you can't just go empty-handed. You can't say, oh, I gave a sacrifice yesterday. You have to offer a new sacrifice. So if you had to buy an animal for sacrifice every time you sinned, how much would that cost? And how complicated is the process, the procedure of giving sacrifice? It's easy to sin, but it's easy to be forgiven of your sins. But Jesus offered himself once as a sacrifice on the cross, and by dying, he became the eternal offering. That's in Hebrews 9.28. So Christ also, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin, to those who eagerly await him. As we believe in Jesus and give worship with thanksgiving, there's no need to give this complicated offering. Jesus has allowed this precious and great gift to us. Hebrews 9, verse 20, chapter 10, verse 29, and chapter 13, verse 20, speaks of the blood of the covenant. the blood of the covenant. Jesus' blood is the blood of the covenant. So at this time, you are not by yourself alone. But please believe that you are giving worship with Jesus as your sacrifice inside of your heart. Jesus has forgiven all of our sins, our original sins, our hereditary sins, our self-committed sins, and has declared, you are sinless. You are now righteous because you believe in Jesus. You are God's people. You are sons and daughters of God who have made a covenant by the blood of Jesus Christ. We need to receive this blessing. God is most pleased with the saints who rely on Jesus' blood of the cross and give worship. He is most pleased with you. No matter what hardships come in your life, please do not miss out on worship. Look at the seats around you. A pastor, but the, the, due to the church circumstances, you cannot give excuses. Wherever you are, you have to give worship well. And if we do so, what would God say? Oh, you believe in my son. 
my son died a tragic death upon the cross because of you, but you know that, and you're giving worship to me through him. If he sees that, how happy would he be? Throughout your life of faith, how many times have you pleased God? And from now on, how many times will you please God? It's none other than through worship that we can please Him. So from now on, by giving worship to Him, please declare that we are the people covenanted with God through worship, and moreover, may we be able to spread the fragrance of Jesus. Being able to come before God, we're thankful for being able to praise Him, for being able to give our offerings to Him, we're thankful. And when we're like that, the devil cannot take an opportunity. Thanksgiving is a spiritual fence for us. In your lives, for your family, for your business, your workplace, when whoever you meet, when you are grateful, then the devil cannot take an opportunity. And in your lives, in your families, your workplace and businesses, you must be overflowing with gratitude. Isaiah 43 verse 4 says, Since you are precious in my sight, since you are honored and I love you, I will give other men in your place and other peoples in exchange for your life. This is how much God loves His people who worship Him. This is how much God cares and has interests for the people who died in Christ. If we give worship to Him in spirit and truth, He knows. And He says, I will take care of you. I will take care of you. And He takes care of us throughout our lives. People who are covenanted with Him through worship, not just when they are alive, but even when after death, God regards them as precious. In Revelation 14, 13, He says, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on, yes, says the Spirit, so that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow with them. In the Greek original language, it reads, Blessed are those who are asleep in the Lord. So until we enter the kingdom of God, we must worship well. Dear saints, as believers of Christ, the greatest reward for our deeds while on this earth is worship. A person who does not worship while on this earth are wicked in God's eyes. Their body is here, but if their mind is elsewhere, that is not worship. Because the wicked are people without the covenant, they go straight to the lake of brimstone and fire upon dying. But even after hearing such terrible words or such terrifying words, if we are not able to give proper worship, what would happen? Proverbs 14.32 says, The wicked is thrust down by his wrongdoing, but the righteous has a refuge when he dies. The wicked has no refuge for his wrongdoing. He is thrust down, he falls. But the righteous has a refuge even when he dies because he has the hope of resurrection, the hope of eternal life. So those who are covenanted with God through worship, not just when they're alive, but even after death, please believe that God takes care of them. How thankful are we, right? This is an eternal care that he provides. Psalm 17, verse 15 also says, As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. I will be satisfied with your likeness when I awake. I will be satisfied. 
If you die and are resurrected, since you can see the Lord's likeness, how joyful would you be? So we don't fear death. The moment that people uh, leave this earth, you can see if that person lived a life of faith well or not. In 1 Thessalonians 3, verse 13, it says, So that he may establish your hearts without blame and holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. When Jesus returns, the one thing that he has asked from us is that we will be holy without blame. Also in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, he says, May your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete. This is what Father wants from us. Then how can we live a life without blame? How can we live a life that is complete? While living on this earth, let us worship God with all of our heart and all of our soul. But when we do so with thanksgiving, please believe that we are without blame and preserved complete. This is why worship is important. As the end draws near, it becomes more and more difficult to give worship. When we worship well, our blames disappear. Even if we had this blemish, then they all disappear. My entire life, what takes care of my life is worship. But on the contrary, if we don't worship properly, then we are bound to be destroyed. Please believe this. Now I will conclude. God desires to make a covenant through worship and is pleased with it. Even if we believe in Jesus for decades, we're not able to worship with all of our heart, with an earnest heart. We must repent of that. Worship is more precious than my life. Worship will take care of my entire life. Please believe that. You need to acknowledge this. Your fleshly parents may forsake you, but the Lord does not. That's in Psalm 27, verse 10. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me up. Even if my fleshly, my biological parents abandon me, God will take me up. He will accept me. This means that he will not leave us alone as orphans. Isaiah 49, 15. Can a woman forget her nursing child and have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, but I will not forget you. Verse 16. Behold, I have inscribed you on the, so on the palms of my hands. How grateful are we for this? He said, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Have you seen somebody just passing by me write my name on their palms? God has inscribed us on his palms. And in Isaiah 63, verse 16, For you are our father, Though Abram does not know us and Israel does not recognize us, you, O Lord, are our Father. Our Redeemer from of old is your name. Abraham does not know us. The kings of the past do not know us. But God does not say, I do not know you. He does not forget us. And He tells us, I am your Father. He tells us, I am your father. And please believe that this father is with you. How thankful are we.
Our saints of Pyongyang, starting from now until we enter heaven, for the rest of our lives, may we be successful in everything through worship. This I bless you with an, in the name of the Lord. Let's pray. Our Father God, who is living and working, we thank you as we live on this earth by your blood of the covenant. We thank you for having us become your people who are covenanted through worship. Now let us realize that worship is more precious than my life and that worship will take care of me throughout my life. Whenever we give worship, may we do so with a grateful heart. Now on until we enter heaven, may we have a firm determination in our hearts so that our worship will be given in spirit and truth. May it be a living worship. Our families as well, our children, our husbands, Father God, there are members of our families who are not here with us. But please visit them at this time. Please allow them a willing spirit, a voluntary heart, May their hearts move, Father God, and may they be able to come with willing footsteps. May those footsteps be footsteps of grace. And Father God, due to health issues, there are saints who are suffering and ailing, and their families as well. Please visit them at this time and lay your hand where they are ailing, and may there be a work of healing. Father God, Elder Shin Young Mi's son, Yun Kwang In, because he's been vomiting and suffering too, so much, tomorrow morning he will have a surgery of uh, removing the hematoma. Father God, please be with a doctor. May he be completely healed. And may he not have any side effects or after effects. May this uh, precious son of yours come to understand the word and believe in you and come before you with the voluntary footsteps. And may uh, your grace be upon him for that work. And may all the hardships and sufferings in that family leave the family. And Father, especially for our children, our saints who are suffering due to mental illnesses, depression, due to uh, uh, panic attacks, Father God, may they all be healed. Please visit them. And please lay your hands upon their heads, upon their hearts, so that all darknesses will depart from them. In these end times, by doing so, may they all uphold your precious will as your precious children. Our holy God, for all the prayers that we were not able to uh, lift up at this time, we believe that you have already heard them. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen.